Hi there and welcome to my channel. My name is Alice and today I wanted to show you quite possibly the weirdest art supply I have ever found. These are the Faber-Castell gelatos and they are so unique and so interesting. But before I jump into demoing them and reviewing them and making some art with them, I just want to say a quick thank you to our sponsor for this video. Our sponsor for this video is Skillshare. You guys know I love Skillshare. They've sponsored a lot of my videos in the past. They are a huge supporter of my channel and I am so thankful for all the support that they give me and my channel it makes so many things possible for me. So thank you to Skillshare. If you don't know what Skillshare is, Skillshare is an online learning platform and they have thousands of classes on pretty much any subject that you could imagine. Illustration, fine art, photography, graphic design, animation, a bunch of cool stuff. One class that I noticed that I thought that you guys would be really interested in is this botanical illustration class. It's called Botanical Illustration Paint a Colorful Garden with Watercolor and Gouache and it's by Sarah Bottaccini Meadows. And she's a print designer and illustrator and she's so talented and this class is so, so interesting. It's only a 35 minute class and it takes you through the initial sketch through the final finished piece. So yeah, you guys might like that. If something like that sounds interesting or useful to you and you'd like to try out Skillshare, they are offering a free two month trial to my subscribers. So click the link down below to check out your free two month trial. Thanks so much for Skillshare and then let's get on with the video. So as I said, these are the gelatos by Faber Castell and I saw these on Amazon and I was immediately intrigued. So what they said on Amazon was that this was a multi-purpose art color stick. I got a gift set which came with 28 colors and I got that because it had a bunch of different varieties of colors in it. It had metallics and then it also had their regular colors, neutrals, a wide variety of different colors. So I really got a lot to try with getting the gift set. So these were really intriguing to me because of a lot of reasons, but the primary reason is that they are considered a multi-purpose medium. So. On Amazon, when it says, what's a gelato, it says, gelatos are the original multi-purpose medium and is a go-to color option for mixed media artists and paper crafters alike. This dynamic medium is a compact, acid-free, water-soluble pigment crayon that glides on creamy smooth for vibrant color and coverage. Gelatos blend easily without water and can be used on any porous surface. With gelatos, you can add water to create a mist, mix with your favorite mediums, Combine and blend to create new colors, add water to create watercolors, layer, add shimmer or highlight in journals, day planners, or Bibles. Gelatos are available in 68 delicious colors and the complete collection includes 52 opaque, 12 iridescent, and 4 highlighters. Okay, so that was a lot of information. As you can see, I am testing and swatching all of the actual gelatos so that I can see how many of their claims and techniques actually held up and what I could do with them. So I tried them on three different kinds of paper. I tried them on a mixed media paper. I tried them on a cold pressed watercolor paper, which is what I'm currently working on. And I tried them on a dark paper. The reason for this is that they are able to work on special surfaces, including dark paper. I wanted to try a lot of the different techniques. I didn't try the one where you mash everything up, put it in a spray bottle and spray it, even though that sounded very cool because it sounded a little too messy. But I did try most of the others that were mentioned in the book as well as ones that I came up with myself. Since the gift set came with quite a few blending tools, including a water brush that had this cool pump on it that I couldn't quite figure out how to make work, as well as some blending stumps and tortillions and things like that. I don't normally use any sort of medium that has blending stumps, tortillions, except for when I do my palatable packs demos, but I have used oil pastels and such in school, so I was excited to try this out in a bunch of different ways. When I tested them, I found that the water-based ways of working, which were the ones I was most excited about, were the ones that I actually liked least. I found that these crayons really picked up texture of paper, which made them hard to work with watercolor paper. I feel like they would work a lot better with hot press watercolor paper, which I don't have, but I might pick up a couple of sheets just so that I can try these on it. They worked much better on a really smooth paper. This black paper is just drawing paper, and so they worked really, really nicely on this. When you blended them with the stump or the tortillion, 
they created a almost oil paint like effect and you could create some really really beautiful blending and textures that's what i used primarily for the shirt so the shirt is based on the idea of a stormy sky flattened out and placed into the shirt so removing any shading or indication that it is a shirt simply the shape filled with a sky it's something that i'm interested in in my own personal art that involves flattening out and juxtaposing 2d and 3d i won't go into it anymore but i was trying to paint a sky and i found that these worked really nicely for that because i was really able to carve out where the clouds were and create these really really nice controlled blends I used a little bit of water on a brush to try to smooth things out in the clouds, but I mostly used the stump and I also used my fingers to really work it into the paper. I really enjoyed this technique and I think it works great for natural landscapes. One of the things that I did have a hard time with that started showing up in this specific part, as well as I had issues with it later as well, is you really can only layer these so much. Now that's to be expected, um, but after time they just do get quite a buildup, almost a waxy surface, and at that point the pigment just won't stick to it. And you also have some issues where every now and then it was trying to lift pigment because I had so much on there. But if you're not layering up ex to the extreme, I don't think that that would be an issue that you would have. For the background, I created a gradient but then I went on top with a wet, stiff brush. I wanted to try that because it had been mentioned in the techniques. Then I tried a wet blending sponge on top of it and things just got bad. As you can see, it really picked up a lot of the color from the center. So I went back over with the pastels to re-put that color down and then I actually tried spraying it to blend the color a little bit more. This was a much more effective solution than using the brush because it didn't lift up the color as much. And then I smoothed it out again and went over again with more colors. As you can see, I did have a couple issues with the lighter pinks lifting up and becoming transparent when I tried to blend them. They were very opaque when I put them down, but when I tried to blend them, I started having some issues. That said, I'm working on a pretty thin paper. It's a dark paper and certain colors just aren't gonna show up as well on it. I put a plant in the background because I love plants. This is a Fitonia plant, it's based on my plant Frenchie, and this is where I ran into something that I suspected would be an issue, but I was confirmed, which is that it's really hard to get small detail with these. As you can see, they are big, fat crayons. They are truly sticks. They are extendable, so they have a twist top, and they extend out and retract inwards but they are not sharp or pointed. There is no fine point. If you want thin lines, you can use the edge, but that's pretty much it. So it can be difficult to get those real details that you're looking for, especially if you're working as small as I did. This is a very small piece. It's just from a sketchbook. Something with a tip as large as these pens or crayons, whatever you wanna call them, it's gonna be a lot more suited to working large if you're looking to create detail. If you're just working at creating backgrounds, uh, more abstract work, things that don't require as much finicky, tiny little details like eyes and noses and things like that, or patterns, then that won't be a problem for you. But if you do use a lot of detail in your pieces, that might be something that you wanna keep in mind. So moving on to the skin. The skin was interesting. The skin I was nervous about, obviously, uh, mixing skin tones is always difficult and as someone that comes from primarily watercolors and paint where I can mix the color on a palette and then transfer it to the paper, I'm always a little nervous to do on canvas mixing, which is what you really have to do when you're working with dry media like colored pencils, pastels, water-based crayons, whatever you want to call these. So that's always a little nerve-wracking for me, but I was excited to try it and I was actually quite happy with the way that this worked for skin. The only issues that I had were again, I was working on a black paper and a lot of the colors that I wanted to use in the skin tone, trying to create a lighter skin tone for this piece were not as opaque, although they were decently opaque and I was able to build them up quite nicely. I think more of the issue lay in just not being able to get quite as much detail as I originally maybe wanted. And again, that comes down to me using a very small piece of paper as well. 
I really enjoyed the overall look that this gave. It reminded me very much of not, I'm going to say this and I don't mean this in a, I'm just, Degas work and not in any way comparable in terms of the talent or skill <laughs> at all. Just the way that the medium looks on the paper, working on that toned paper reminded me a lot of his pastels and he is one of my biggest influences. I adore him. So being able to find a medium that somewhat replicated a little bit of that look and technique was really exciting to me, even though I will never be able to replicate his skill. <laughs> So I've mentioned that there are a bunch of different ways that you can blend these mixed media sticks, but I didn't use all of them. So I wanted to talk about some of the others. So I've mentioned the dry media and being able to mix them with tortillions and stumps and things like that. I've mentioned using them wet on wet. One of the other things that I did right at the beginning was I tried dipping the crayon into water and then applying that. That actually worked really, really well and I think would be great if you're creating a flat wash of t or a gradient or a background or something like that. I also played around with the spray bottle. I think I mentioned this before, but one of the techniques it says that you can actually do is you can crush up and cut off a small part of the stick mix it in with water and put it in a spray bottle and actually spray with it. So I think that could be a really good technique to use in a watercolor painting. If you are wanting a colored spray, uh, watercolor is quite diluted, so this might be a better way for you to get that pigment without wasting your watercolor. Some of the other things that you could do were really interesting and a lot of them involved stamps. So you can use it for stamping you can use it in a couple different ways, actually. So you can use them for embellishment. So you can like recolor fabric and buttons and brads and anything like that. For stamping, you can do textural stamping. So you can get like tone on tone events using gesso or glaze. And you can also spritz it, spritz the paper and then apply the gelatas to a stamp and press that onto the wet surface or you can coat the stamp with them, spritz the surface of the stamp, and then press that onto the page. So there's quite a few different ways to use these with stamps and with crafting and scrapbooking and card making and things like that. It also mentions that you can mix them in with gel mediums that you would use for acrylic or mixed media. So they really are versatile. There's a lot of different ways that you can use them. So if any of those ways sound interesting to you, if the other one doesn't, then they may still be something that you would want to look into. I don't know. I Let's go into my personal opinions about these now. I've talked a little bit about the techniques, the things that I've tried, and uh, I liked these. I didn't love them. I liked them. I thought they were really fun to use. I thought they were interesting to use, and I'm really glad that I tried them. I think that they work very well for applying as a dry medium. I loved that technique. I loved the way it looked. You could, as I mentioned, only build it up so much before you started having issues with it not sticking to the surface. And I'm not sure what mediums would work on top of it when you've built it up so much, but I did love the effect. As a water-based medium, I didn't like it as much as I thought I would. They didn't blend as much as I wanted them to, but I am interested in trying it on a smoother watercolor paper. And I really, I really want to try the stamping methods that they mentioned, especially stamping onto damp paper. That could be really interesting to incorporate pattern and such into the background of a painting or a piece. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of possibilities with these and there's a lot of things that I want to experiment with them more. So I'm definitely glad that I purchased them. If nothing else, I mean, the name Gelato is great. Um, they, they are versatile, they are pigmented, they are creamy. They are something that I think would work in a lot of people's artistic practice. So if you are the kind of person that you love working big, you love working texturally, you love working in mixed media, you enjoy incorporating different art supplies, you're not that big into loads of tiny details or working really small. If you're looking for something to experiment with, I think that these would be really up your alley. If you enjoy water mediums, you might like them. If you enjoy dry mediums like oil pastels, you would probably like them. If you like to paint very small, detailed, very controlled artwork, these may not be for you. They are harder to control. They are big and bulky and you can't get those details. So they work for you. If that's the kind of art that 
you make. They're gonna work better for backgrounds, for creating the overall atmosphere, for doing larger piece, larger parts of your whole piece, if that makes sense. I did try the metallics as well. At the very end, I used one of the gold metallics to do a flat pattern of the plants in the background kind of overlapping her as well. And the metallics were really, really pretty. They were just as creamy as the others. They weren't as metallic as some things that I've seen, but they were definitely metallic. And I really enjoyed those. I haven't tried those too much with water yet, but I will see how those mix into watercolors as well. So I hope you liked this video. I hope that you found it informative or useful. I saw them online and thought they were interesting and I figured I can't be the only one that has seen them online and thought they're interesting and wanted to know more about them. So I thought, hey, I'll try them and hopefully I can help somebody else. So yeah, if you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you wanna see more. I'm trying to upload Tuesdays and Fridays right now, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Let me know if you've tried these down below. I would love to hear what you think of them. If you've tried them and you have some techniques to share with me, let me know because I want to figure out different ways to use these. And let me know if you've ever seen anything like this before, if there's any dupes out there or other brands that I should try. And on that note, if there's anything else you want me to try, let me know down below and I will be happy to try it. That said, I love you guys so, so much. I will see you on Tuesday for another Sketchy Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day. Bye guys.